Um, so, welcome to the first tutorial. Um, hopefully you guys are all able to get a good break between, I guess, winter term and now, whether you guys were working or in school. Um, and hopefully you guys are back in school mode. Um, so to start things off, my name is Christine. I'm going to be one of your tutorial leaders uh, for this term in tax. Andrew Jones will be the other tutorial leader. Um, so sometimes it will be me and sometimes it will be him. We're just kind of switching back and forth to teach you guys the material. Um, if you guys attended your AFM 201 uh, tutorials back in second year, you might remember both the both of us. Um, but I guess just a little refresher on myself. Uh, right now, I'm currently doing the MAC program. I've spent all of my co-op terms working at KPMG in the audit tax rotation program. So I have had some experience in tax. Um, in September, I'm going to be working full-time at Ernest & Young in tax. So I know most of you guys are probably taking this course just because it's mandatory. You know, I'm not sure how many of you guys are actually interested, I guess, in uh, pursuing tax as a career. But um, if you are, uh, you please feel free to you know, send me an email if you have any questions, and I'll be happy to discuss any questions you might have. Um, but I guess to get started in the tutorial today, we're just going to discuss a little bit about, I guess, what you can expect from the, the tutorials. Uh, go over what you guys learned this week in the course, and then we're also going to go through um, a tutorial problem. Um, this week, we're just going to go through the, I'll introduce the problem to you guys and we'll read it together. Uh, normally, I'll probably post up the problem beforehand, so you guys can kind of take a look at it and read it before the tutorials actually start. Um, so I guess in terms of resources, you guys, most of you I've seen have already discussed, uh, discovered the discussion board on Learn. So that's available to you guys if you have any questions. Uh, you can also post there anonymously. Right, so it's just a great resource. Um, and as well, the tutorials here, if you have any questions you know, uh, that you didn't understand in class, send me an email and I can kind of incorporate that into the tutorial and discuss it here as well. Um, and I guess that being said, tutorials uh, are online this term. So it is a completely new experience both for you and for myself. Um, so if you have any suggestions, um, on, I guess, how I'm running it, if Andrew's doing something that you guys like, or if you guys have any, I guess, under co comments or improvements you think I can make, please feel free to suggest them to me. And I guess some functions, I've noticed you guys all kind of discovered the chat window on the bottom right-hand corner. Um, as well, if you do, so if you have a question, you can um, type it there and I can see it. Um, as well, if I don't notice that, at the top, near the center, there is, a, I guess, a person with their hand raised. So you can click that to, I guess, raise your hand in the uh, tutorial setting. Um, so that kind of prompts my attention to kind of give you an opportunity to speak or to ask a question. Um, there is a speaking function. I've tried it out a few times. And sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. So if you guys have questions, you can try out the Hello? Yes. Um, sorry. So if you have questions, you can raise your hand and I can give you the opportunity to speak. Um, but otherwise, I'm going to ask that you guys don't speak. I kind of made it such that I don't think you guys can be speaking um, when I'm doing it. So if you raise your hand, I can give you access to speaking. And if it doesn't work, then we'll do just type your questions. And I guess um, moving on. What you can expect from me for the tutorials usually is we'll go over the technical material that you guys covered in class in the prior week, um, and then we'll go over a problem or two. Um, the problems will be um, from the CD that's in your textbook. So in the Beam Lake Internet, um, the green text that you have at the back, there should be a CD. And if you put that in the computer, you should be able to see the problems. Um, I'll pick up the problems and I'll post it on Learn at least a week before the tutorial. Um, and so, as I mentioned, if you have any other questions, you can email me in advance and I can incorporate those uh, questions in my tutorial. And I guess um, from you, especially because this is an online tutorial, please don't be shy to ask any questions. Feel free to interrupt me if you need me to. Um, and any suggestions and feedback that you have is welcome. And 
I guess next, that's kind of all I have for the tutorials. Does anyone have any questions, I guess, so far? All right, okay, so I guess next up, we'll just be covering what you guys um, discussed in class this week. Uh, so the main concept this week was about when someone is liable to pay taxes to the Canadian government. Okay, so there's, to keep it simple at first, there's two types. You can be a resident of Canada or you can be a not a resident of Canada. If you're a resident of Canada, you're going to be taxed on what's called your worldwide income. So worldwide income is basically any income that you earn from anywhere in the world. So if you, say you had a summer job and you went to the States to work, um, that would be actually be considered um, U.S. income. So it would, you would call it U.S. sourced income or foreign sourced income. Um, and so that's not um, Canadian income, but if you are a resident of Canada, you will still be taxed on that. Meanwhile, if you're not a resident of Canada, you're only going to be taxed on what's called your Canadian sourced income. So if you have a bank account in Canada, but you live in the United States, um, and the bank account earns you interest, right? That interest is Canadian sourced uh, income. So the, that's the general idea of it, of when you get taxed. Um, but I guess then it gets more complicated when you kind of consider, well, when are you considered a resident of Canada? And so to be considered a full, uh, full year resident of Canada, you look at the ties you have to the country. Um, so there are two types of ties. There's what's called primary ties. And these are the most important factors to consider when de deciding if someone is a resident of Canada or not. And then there are also secondary ties. Um, so primary ties, there's maybe two. One is a dwelling place. So do you have a place in Canada for you to live? Do you have a house, an apartment, a condo? And is it is it furnished? Are, do you have a bed there? Do you have a room there that you can you know, go in and sleep in whenever you need to? Right? And the second um, primary tie is, where is your spouse and your dependents located? Okay. Um, one important thing I guess to note when I say spouse and dependents, that's not your parents and that's not children that you have that are grown up. So, you know, if you're a parent you have a child who's you know, 25 and you decide to move to Canada and you're not in Canada, that doesn't mean you are going to be considered a Canadian resident, right? So it's only for spouse and dependents. And then there's a lot of secondary ties. Um, yes, I should be able to post up the slides. If anything, um, the video will be posted online. Um, Kevin should be taking care of that. And so uh, when the video is posted, you would be able to see all the slides anyways. Um, if you guys want the actual slides, I guess, to go through, I can get those to be posted. Just let me know. Um, but I guess, sorry, going back, secondary ties. Uh, you can refer to those on in your textbook. It's on page 56, Exhibit uh, 2 one. And so they list a lot of things. So secondary ties, I guess, how they differ is that they're not as important as primary ties. And so if you have primary ties to Canada, even if you don't have secondary ties, if you don't have a bank account in Canada, uh, or you're not, you don't have credit cards, or that kind of thing, you're most likely still going to be a Canadian resident because primary ties are what's most important. Um, however, if you don't have any primary ties, but you have a lot of secondary ties, right, that might indicate that you can still be considered a Canadian resident. Okay? Um, and so there's also here I have at the bottom, it's called IT 221R3. What this is, it's um, what CRA has is a document um, made by the CRA that basically summarizes points about when you would be considered a resident of Canada. When would, I guess, the CRA consider you to be a resident? And so, if you guys want, you guys can Google this, you take a look at the document. Um, you guys probably never used it so far, but it's just useful, I guess, to take a look at and see how it is and how it looks like because you guys are going to have to refer to documents such as this. Um, when you guys start your tax assignments for this course. All right, okay, so those are the ties um, that make, that do need to basically be a full year resident of Canada. 
And if you don't meet those ties, you're basically considered a non-resident of Canada. If, on the other hand, you were a resident of Canada and then you moved in, in the middle of the year, right? Um, and during the year that you, the part of the year after you moved, you're considered a non-resident, then you're considered to have made a clean break from um, Canada and you're considered a part-year resident. Similarly, if you were not a resident of Canada before, um, you moved to Canada, say, in March, and you established a lot of ties when you came here in March. You bought a house, you know, your family moved here, that kind of thing. Um, you're considered to have made a fresh start, and you're also considered to be a part of your residence. Um, so those are the three, I guess, main residencies. And then there's one last one, which is when you're deemed to be a four-year resident. Right? Um, and this occurs when you are sojourning in Canada. And sojourning basically means an uh, unusual, casual, or intermittent visit or stay. And so I guess what that means is it's, it's for someone who's not usually physically present in Canada, but they, they don't, I'm sorry, it's for someone who is physically present in Canada, but they don't intend to remain in Canada or they don't really see Canada as their home. Okay, and so it's important to, I guess, know what sojourning means because if someone was in Canada for over 183 days, it doesn't mean they're a full time resident for the entire year. Um, so, for example, if you have a Canadian resident and they left Canada in, say, October. So they were in Canada for over 183 days, right? But after they left in October, they are assumed to have broken all the ties and they're considered non-resident. They would be considered a party resident. And so the this deeming for a full year resident is only applicable to people who are sojourning in Canada. So only if they're visiting. And so if they're in Canada for 183 days or more, then they're deemed to be a full year resident. And so when I say 183 days, a day does not mean 24 hours, right? So if say someone's working at, living in the US and they are coming to Canada every day to work um, and they come in at eight, you know, they come to Canada at 8 a.m., they leave Canada at 5 p.m., then that's still considered a day, even though they weren't in Canada for 24 hours. Okay. Um, any questions so far? And yes, the chat is going to be recorded. Um, intent can be important as, I guess, a tie. It's not usually that important in the sense that, well, how do you define intent, right? Um, and so what they do is they look at intent by looking at ties. Do you intend, if, if you were a resident of Canada and you moved and you did not sell your house, they'll look at it and you say you intended to move and you intended to never come back to Canada. Um, but it's kind of like, well, you still have a house there, right? You still have a house that's available for your use. You, so you measure intent based on these ties. Um, in terms of the, if the person worked 9 to 5, Monday to Friday in Canada for 184 days, yes, they would be deemed to be a full-time resident. The slides, I can post the slides up. Um, in terms of the question regarding if the tests are used to prove intent, um, I wouldn't necessarily say as a def definitive answer that they're used to prove intent, but they are a way to see it, right? Um, because you can't you can't prove intent. I mean, as a taxpayer, you're going to say whatever is most beneficial to you, right? And so therefore, you look at other factors to kind of well, is this really your intention? And even even if it wasn't your intention, right? If you have enough ties, right? Um, like you really intended to move away from Canada, but you didn't sell anything or you didn't really think about it, right? Then you, st you will still be taxed as a resident.
sorry, so one second, let me go through, I guess, your questions. Um, regarding the backpacking to Canada for 183 days. Um, well, I guess you have to kind of look at, well, you're, if you're just backpacking, you're just traveling, you're not really earning income anywhere in Canada, right? Um, and so what would you put on your tax return? Right, you don't really have anything to tax. It's a bit different. No, they don't. If so, if you don't have income, you don't have to file a return. Um, you don't have to file a return ever unless you owe taxes. So, um, just something for, I guess, you guys to note. If you guys, you know, your, the deadline for your filing taxes is April 30th. You guys don't really have to file that by that date because you guys probably don't owe taxes. Um, and so, you only have to file your return if you owe taxes to the government. Did I miss any other questions? Okay, one second, let me just go through the questions. Um, yes, as students, okay, as students, yes, you would definitely want to file your tax returns. You get your carry forwards. Um, you get, you probably get money back kind of things for your GST and stuff like that. So, yes, you would want to file your returns, but I guess what I'm trying to say is you don't absolutely have to. If you don't file your return, the CRA is not going to make send, give you a penalty. Um, deemed full-time resident would, yes, if you are deemed to be a full-time resident, you would be taxing your worldwide income. Let me get back to you on the backpacking question. Um, I think in my eyes, um, if you can actually, if the government can actually catch you, I guess, yes, you should. Uh, and they might try to argue that, but I'm not completely sure, and I will get back to you on that question. Okay, anything about, um, okay, sorry, anything about regarding taxes from the other country, double taxation, there actually are treaties. And so sometimes, like either if you get a tax credit in Canada or you get a tax credit in your other country, or um, sometimes depending on the treaty, you don't have to pay taxes. Um, but that's based on treaties. We don't cover that in this course. There is a uh, master's course covering that. So um, let's not think too much about foreign tax. Um, do you guys want me to, why don't I go through the problem I have first, um, just to see, kind of wrap your, all your heads around um, what we learned, um, and then we'll kind of see if you guys have more questions, and I don't mind staying a little later in case you guys have additional questions, alright? Okay, so let me open up the problem file.
No attendance to tutorials is not mandatory. Yes, tutorials will be posted for you. We have to see how we're posting it. It will probably post it on YouTube, but that depends. Can you guys all see, I guess, the, um, the documents I have opened? Perfect. <laughs> okay, I just need a few people to confirm. Don't worry, thanks guys. Okay, so, you guys can full screen your um, your page. So there should be a button around the top right corner-ish where you guys can full screen um, the page if it's not big enough for you. Let me know if you can't figure that out. Um, okay, so the problem, I'll just read it to you guys and we'll kind of take a moment to think about it and then go through it. So you've been approached by Malcolm Mining Engineer for some tax advice concerning his pending transfer of an indefinite duration to Brazil. Okay, so you, you, somebody came to you, their name is Malcolm, they want some tax advice and they're thinking about going to Brazil indefinitely. Uh, Malcolm, age 50, was born in Canada and has resided in Canada all of his life. He has been employed for the past five years as VP in charge of Canadian Property Development for Resource Exploitation Limited. A Canadian public company located in Toronto. His salary for last year was $85,000 plus a $15,000 performance bonus. The company is transferring Malcolm to Brazil on or about January 15th of next year. Malcolm's new assignment is to purchase potential mining properties, particularly gold but also other materials, primarily in Brazil. However, the purchase of the property in other countries in South America, um, depending upon their political stability, has also been included in his mandate. He anticipates a salary increase of approximately $10,000 and a, an appropriate bonus arrangement yet to be negotiated, a living allowance of $2,500 per month, and a travel allowance of $3,000 per month. Although this particular assignment is for an indefinite period, Malcolm anticipates eventually returning to Canada. This just tells you a little bit more, I guess, about um, his transfer to Brazil. Um, so going on, Malcolm intends to sell the family home in Toronto and to purchase a home in Brazil. However, he does not wish to sell the family cottage, which is located near North Bay, Ontario, since he intends to return annually to vacation there. His wife, wife and two cho younger children will accompany him to Brazil and will be transferred there at the company's expense. His two older children, both of whom are married, will remain in Canada. Malcolm has indicated that he would transfer his investment portfolio, his personal possession, including some very valuable antiques and paintings, and his bank accounts to Brazil. He will, however, retain his membership in the Upper Crest Club on a non-resident basis. The company will deposit his paychecks in a Brazilian bank account. So I guess the last two paragraphs has a lot of information about what he intends to do and it really talks about the ties. Okay, so that's those are two really important paragraphs. Um, going on, Malcolm anticipates that he will be returning quite frequently to Canada during next year in order to clean up projects in his old position. His present plan is to return for two weeks every month from March to December, except for all of August, which he intends to spend at his cottage near North Bay. His wife and two children will not accompany him to Canada except for the August vacation period. Okay, um, and so what they ask you to do here is uh, to complete the Canadian tax implications of the above, I guess, departure. So um, what we can kind of think about are, well, what are the four, I guess, residency statuses that he could have? Can someone test that for me? You can raise your hand. You can test out, I guess, the features. Yes. Go ahead, Anish.
Okay, perfect. Okay, so you have your full-time residence, right? Your non-resident. Part year. And your dean full -time. Okay, and, and the next thing you do is you kind of look at these points and you kind of put them where, I guess, you think it indicates. So, for example, um, I'll do one, but he sold his family home in Toronto, right? And so that's an indication that he's going, it's, he's going to be a non-resident in the future. So, sold family home. Um, one of the things I do want to make note of, um, oh, so okay, in regards to solutions, you actually all have the solutions to the problems. Um, they're on the CD, right, um, of the BLB um, CD in the back of your textbook. All the problems and the solutions are there. Um, so you guys can refer to that for the solutions. We'll just kind of take this up uh, with you guys so you can, so it's just a little bit easier to understand. Um, but one of the things I do want to talk to you guys about for residency is that residency problems are usually very gray, right? There's a few issues in tax where there's almost never a definitive answer, and residency is one of those um, issues. So what I mean by that is you're going to have all these points, and it's not going to be a clear-cut answer. And so what you guys really have to do is um, state your conclusion and your reasons for your conclusion. Okay, don't just say, oh, this person can be considered both a resident or a part year resident, right? Um, instead, say, you know, they're going, you think that they are going to be a resident, right? Because they still have very strong ties. These are their ties. List them, kind of thing. Um, they did break some of their ties, so these are the ties they broke. But I guess more of on, the, on the balance, on the scale, right, it, see, it appears as if he's more likely to be considered a resident of Canada. So it's one of the things to keep in mind when you do a residency problem is make sure you integrate all the facts that you have, right, and state a final conclusion. Okay, um, can anyone else kind of tell me what are the other factors, I guess, that might indicate whether he's a resident or a non-resident? Social ties, okay. Kids, yeah, okay, so kids. Family, so his spouse came with him as well. Yeah. Um, what about the fact that he purchased a home in Brazil? What does that mean? That is for non resident. So, one of the things that I found your textbook doesn't talk about that's a factor, and I guess, in determining residency is something like bought a house in Brazil. Right? So, when you look at whether someone has moved from Canada, right? Um, in addition to seeing how they broke ties in Canada, you could also look at well, what kind of ties did they establish in the foreign country. So if he bought a house in Brazil, if he established bank accounts in Brazil, you no, know, he has memberships there, the fact that his family moved there, so he establishing his roots in Brazil. Um, what about the fact that he's not selling his cottage? Okay, so the fact that he's not selling his cottage, um, he might intend to return. And another thing you might have to look at in more detail, so some, um, 
is, well, was the cottage available for his use uh, throughout the year? I mean, he intends to go there all of August, but we're not sure if it's available for his use throughout the rest of the year. Um, yep, yeah, investment property, his portfolio, and all his personal possessions were transferred to Brazil. Yes, I can make it bigger. Yep, yeah, so the cottage, if he can rent it out, and if he rents out the cottage, um, it will break um, office ties. So one of the things he could put was he didn't sell his cottage as a full-time resident, but as a non-resident, you know, he he did he did not sell cottage, but was rented out, something like that. Um, let's see what other points are there. You know, he so his bank accounts. He has bank accounts in Brazil now, right? Um, what about the fact that he retained membership in the Upper Crust Club? Okay, one second. Yeah, so Upper Club membership is a social tie. So it indicates that he's still a uh, resident type. Um, to the question about whether, why renting goes under the non-resident column. So one of the ties to Canada is if you have a place to live in Canada, right? So he has a cottage. If he has a place, if he can go back and live in his cottage, it's a tie um, for a resident. But if he decides to rent out his cottage, for example, then the cottage is no longer available for his use at any time of the year. And therefore, it's an indication. Um, it could, you could, so, yes, yeah, so the fact that the membership is a non-resident status, right, um, that can, you can kind of say, well, he still has a club membership, so it indicates that he's a resident, but he uh, made his membership a non-resident status, so maybe it's not a very strong tie at all. So um, you just have to, I guess, weigh all the factors together. Um, some of the factors are stronger than other factors. So for example, the fact that his spouse and kids are coming with him is a stronger factor than all the other ones. Okay, um, along the question, if the cottage is rented monthly, right, would that still be considered a factor? Um, so yes, if it's rented monthly, then technically, um, he can, uh, Malcolm can simply come back to Canada whenever he wants office, right? You know, he rented it in July, but he wants to come back in August. Or maybe it's rented for September, and he can just come back in October, he can just decide not to rent it for October. And so, um, you don't have to, I guess, what you can do is when you write it, um, on as an answer for an exam, for example, you can say something like how, okay, well, you know, he did rent the cottage, so it's not available for his use all the time, but the rent is only on a monthly basis, so maybe he can come come back more often, and therefore it strengthens um, the cottage as a tie to be a resident. Right, so you can't just, so it's a little bit, I guess, difficult, and that's, that's why I'm saying that residency is not a black and white issue. There's so much that you have to consider that um, there's never a clear-cut answer. Yep, okay, the fact that he comes tends to come back once a year for vacation. Um, okay, so I guess you guys have um, a lot of conclusions. Let me just see if there's anything else. Um, one of the other points is that the company pays his checks. Um, to a Brazilian bank account, right? So he's employment income deposited into right, um, he frequently plans to return to Canada, right?
Um, and then just one other part is that he also has an indefinite duration in the result. And that's in the first paragraph. Okay, um, yes, yeah, so his employer is in Canadian. So employer is Canadian, paid by a Canadian company. So um, okay, let me just read all, you guys have a lot of comments, let me just read through them. Okay, so I guess just let's just look at the parts we have now. I, I feel like a lot of people are saying that, you know, he did make a clean break. Um, and so if you say he made a clean break, then um, in your, I guess for your final answer, because they're asking for Canadian tax implications, right? You would say this year he would have to file a part year resident, and the following years he would be considered a non resident. Right? Um, the other thing is that you could also make an argument that he's still a full time resident, um, and you just have to justify your answer. Yeah, so the fact that he intends to return to Canada is also another, so that's another point that says he's a resident. So the, the actual answer, so if you go into the CD, you kind of think the answer, there really is no clear cut answer. You can argue two things. You can argue the fact that he's a resident, he did not break enough ties, right? You can say he didn't break enough ties. No, he did sell his cottage, he intends to return to Canada, um, he plans to come in August, his entire family plans to come back with him, he plans to come back to Canada monthly. Okay, even though he sold his house, even though he moved his possessions, you know, you can say you feel he has enough ties to make him still a resident of Canada. So that's one answer. Um, another answer is that you can say, well, you think he's a part-year resident. He's going to be a part-year resident this year. You think he broke enough ties, you know. He sold his family home. He bought a house in Brazil. His family moved with him to Brazil. Yes, he maintained a membership uh, to a club. He didn't sell his cottage, but the cottage is only for vacationing purposes. Um, the membership, you know, it's not a very strong tie. You feel that he established enough ties in Brazil to make it such that he's no longer a resident. Um, so you're looking at, I guess, in the current year, so current year is part year, right? And you're also looking at in the future, because what they're asking for is just tax implications. So what does moving to Brazil mean for him? It means that this year he still has to file a Canadian return, a part year Canadian return, and that next year he is not a resident and he will only have to file a return if he has Canadian source income. Um, okay, so you can also look at whether he's a deemed full-time resident, right? Yeah, so what you would look at here is deemed full-time from March to December, right, 10 months. He intends to come back for two weeks uh, for the two, um, these months, that's 14 days, right? Um, 10 months, excluding all this, right? So nine months for 14 days is 126 days. And then in August, he plans to come back for the entire month, so that's 31 days. And so the total of these days are 157 days. So he does not meet the sojourning um, for more than 183 days, so he's not deemed to be a full-time resident of Canada. Um, yes. Yes to, sorry, yes to the fact that uh, the non-resident points can also go under part year. If he stays um, for over 183 days, would he be deemed instead of part year a uh, non-resident? Yes. So if he was here for over 183 days, he could be deemed to be a full-time resident of Canada instead. Um, so if, if someone is part year or deemed, Okay, so if you're, and only, the test for deemed is if you're sojourning in Canada for 183 days or more. Um, and so to be sojourning in Canada, first of all, you cannot be a resident of Canada, okay? So if you're a resident, you're a resident. You can't be deemed to be a resident. 
right? Um, so if you think they're non-resident and they're coming to Canada, but they're not actually you know, staying here, then you see, are they sojourning in Canada, right? And so if they're sojourning in Canada for over 183 days, they would be considered deemed uh, resident and they would not be considered a part year. No, you cannot be deemed to be a non-resident. If you do not make the ties, you're just simply not a resident. Um, any other questions? I'm just going to ask if you, know, you guys can feel free to type questions as you have them, but if you do see a question or two there that I haven't answered, that you wait for your questions so that I can kind of get through all of them, I guess. Um, employer is Canadian. That matters because that's considered a tie. So if your employer is Canadian, it's a tie to Canada. Sorry, Asri, is that a question or are you stating a Um, sorry, are there additional questions? I'm, I'm just reading through the chat and I'm not sure if you guys are asking a question or if you're just kind of responding to other questions that people have. Okay, well, that's really all there is with the solution, which is why I kind of stopped doing it. Um, but basically, I show you guys the points, right? So here are some of the points. And um, the solution really is you pick a point. So you, there are only two options. You can't say that he's a dean full time because of the fact that he doesn't make the sojourning for over 183 days, really, right? But you can kind of look at, well, he could be a part year, he could be a full time resident. Um, if I were to do this question, okay, personally, I would probably pick that he's a part year. I feel that there are stronger points to support the fact that he is no longer a resident of Canada. So I would say he's a part year resident, and I would talk about why, right? So for example, he sold his home in Toronto, he bought a new house, his spouse and kids came to him kind of thing. Um, and so therefore, he's considered, uh, he broke all his ties. He has a few ties with Canada still, you know, he still has a membership, he intends to return to Canada eventually, um, but I feel like there are very minor ties and therefore he would be considered a partner. That would be the answer I would put. Um, but another appropriate answer is if you said something like, I think he is a resident of Canada because of the fact that, you know, he broke his ties, he, he broke some ties, he sold his house, you know, his kids moved with him kind of thing. But he still has a lot of ties with Canada, you know. He still has a membership. He did sell his cottage, um, that kind of thing. So that's how you could kind of structure your question, right? State your conclusion. State why. Um, here are some contradicting facts, but you think that, you know, um, the fact that you know, he moved out, he established other ties, he broke his ties, they're stronger than what's remaining. If you guys want, I think you can make a separate chat. Let me, for I guess next week's tutorial, I'm going to see if I can figure out something where um, it'll be easier to ask questions. Okay? Um, or, yes, yeah, so one chat window just for questions. So if you post once, put your entire question into one box, especially when a lot of people are typing, it's just a lot easier to see. 
Um, yes, there's no wrong answer as long as you can support it, as long as you have support and conclusions. If he left um, after June June 30th, right, um, and he broke his ties, he made a clean break, he would be considered a part-time. Um, message me if you have a question. Otherwise, Otherwise, I'm just going to assume that you guys are chatting. Yes, I'll stay here for a bit longer in case you guys have other stuff to clarify. But, um, you know, if you guys kind of get... If you guys kind of get this, um, and, you know, you, you feel you're good, then feel free to leave. Um, if you do have any feedback, any suggestions, please, please let me know. I know there are, I guess, a lot of little kinks here and there, especially in terms of questions. Um, so please feel free to give me any suggestions that you might have. And if you do have any other questions that weren't answered um, and you feel like, you know, maybe you don't want to stay or you have something else to do, feel free to post them on the discussion board and we can take a look at them. Yes, it's done if you guys don't have any more questions. Thanks, you guys, for so much for coming. Um, and yeah, once again, please, please let me know if you have any additional suggestions or feedback for those tutorials. <laughs>